Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, I am very passionate about um, access and um, particularly for people that aren't represented in clinical psychology, accessing clinical psychology as a career. So I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So I've got a bit of a, a, a brief spill because you gave me some questions. So I'll start off by just telling you a little bit about my, my current role. So as you said, I'm, I'm a clinical psychologist and as clinical psychologists, we're trained kind of in three kind of core areas the first is sort of clinically clinically we do clinical work so that's sort of therapy um with clients um in research we're trained in research as well and um also in leadership and supervision and um as, as i said before you i work in cam so that means i work with children and adolescents um typically sort of a school age but we can sort of work with um, sort of the, the little, really little ones before they go to school and sort of college age up to the age of 18, that sort of age. And I particularly work with children with a learning disability. So that means um, children who um, ha have significant impairment in sort of ability to learn or pick up new information. And we do sort of things like IQ tests and things to kind of determine that. Um, but we're not really working so much with learning. We're, le we're working more around mental health because that's our, our, our remit as clinic clinical psychologists. So I work with parents who um, have a child with a, a, a learning disability, but also has a mental health difficulty or a behavioural issue that they would like support with. Um, so I, a lot of my work is via parents because naturally I work with children with learning disabilities and sometimes communication can be a real issue and so I work a lot with parents but I also work with schools and other agencies like social services etc um, and I, I do kind of clinical work in that kind of in that kind of capacity um, in terms of kind of uh, other work that I do I, I'm also a, a, a um, teaching fellow so I, I do some part-time work sort of essentially being a tutor to to students who are on a, a master's in, in neuroscience and psychology and that just involves me just sort of chatting with them and just helping them with their studies talking through things um theory etc and then of course i have my youtube channel and my instagram page where i'm trying to make um psychological information uh, clinical psychology information really um, accessible to to people who are kind of early on in their psychology career and um, we want to just kind of gain a bit of an understanding and knowledge of, of what clinical psychology is about and how we take those theories we learn about in lectures and actually apply them so um, a typical day for me um, is really it was really hard for me to think about this because literally every day is different um, so it's really varied job and that's one of the things I really like about my job um, but as I say I do sort of clinical work um, which involves sort of, sort of assessing for difficulties. It can involve um, planning with, with parents about what we do about kind of issues that they're having with their child or in their household. And it can also um, involve kind of educating them about theory that I'm using to inform the work that I'm doing. The way that I approach and the way that clinical psychologists approach work is um, that we're two experts coming together and we work collaboratively to kind of um, yeah, to kind of relieve any difficulty that's happening for people. So um, the people that are coming are experts in their household and their environment and the way that they live their lives. And I bring theory and we work together and we use the two together to kind of muddle through and, and make the best of what we, we can of the situation. And so I, I do that with parents and that's kind of the core part of my clinical work. Um, and, and of course, it, it's a bit of a process um making change and so i support parents through that process and we, we you know redivert if we need to rethink about things if we need to and just we just work through things together um until parents get to a point where they feel like they can do it on their own um i also um in my in my sort of day-to-day -day job in cams i do collect kind of feedback and questionnaires and things like that so i know about my work and how effective it is and in that sense that's kind of research and auditing ourselves and making sure that we're doing things in the right way and it, what we're doing is effective um but but of course we also do kind of major research projects where for example i want to find out if the group that i'm doing is helpful across I don't know, months. Um, and so I might might do a piece of research around that. So that's kind of some of the work that I do. I do a lot of meetings. I'm in a lot of meetings, professional meetings, case meetings, 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 meetings. Um, and um, as I say, I work as a teaching fellow as well. And I do that in the evenings um, and at the weekends, which is quite nice because it's separate to my clinical work, but it's still something somewhere I'm using my skills and my knowledge because um, you do have to have 
the doctorate that I have to do that role. Um, and then you asked me about top three skills. How am I doing for time? I've got a couple of minutes. And um, top three skills that are important for succeeding in my role. So the top three skills are empathy, reflectiveness and self-care. So empathy, because being able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes is really important for the work that we do. Of course, we're talking through people's difficulties. And if we're not able to kind of take an approach as though it's them, then we might be trying to enforce our own lives on other people and that's not cool. So we don't do that. So being able to empathise with other people is really, really important. Being curious and compassionate um, and putting that person that you're helping at the centre. And in order to enable yourself to do that, you do need to be reflective, which is my second top three skill. You need to be reflective because in order to kind of put somebody else's feelings first, you kind of have to do a bit of work on your own so you can put them to one side or know what's yours and what's theirs or have a sense, like a little bit of an antenna. And so that, that skill of reflectiveness outside of the therapy room allows people, allows psychologists to have a chance at being able to do that in the room with people. I'm just turning down things like pride and, and things like that um, so that you're, you never come, you never sort of trying to be bigger than anybody else in the room. You're just trying to facilitate and bring what you can to the room and help somebody. So that's, that's really important. And then the third thing was self-care. So obviously we're dealing with, you know, sensitive themes with, with psychology, um, and particularly with, with clinical psychology, because it's, it's about mental health. And, um, and and we often are working with people that are, are at the brink of crisis. Unfortunately, when people come to us, they've, they've been waiting a while and things have got quite bad sometimes. And so we're dealing with, you know, really difficult themes. So to be able to, um, I guess, take a step back from that, um, it, it, re it requires that um, as a clinical psychologist, we're looking after ourselves, making sure we're checking in with colleagues, making sure, you know, I know what I need in a, in a particular, I don't know, space or time um, to kind of relieve myself so that I'm looking after myself. So those are my three kind of top three skills. I think I've, I've, I've kind of done it in the timer. I can't believe it. Wow. So, um, yeah, just just a quick plug. Obviously, I've started my YouTube channel. So if people want to find me on there, um, you can just type in Dr. Melody Smith and I'm uploading kind of videos, particularly for aspiring psychologists, but um, anybody really um, who's interested. And I am, I'm on Instagram as well. I'm on I'm on the Dr. Melody Smith, but that's spelled out fully. The doctor is spelled out fully because the DL was taken. So. <laughs> anyway but thank you thank you very much for listening any questions don't jump at once <laughs> maybe i could start by just talking about what the route is to clinical psychology it's because it's, it's quite winding or well actually everybody's route is different really um but there is kind of basic things that you have to do so i um studied my undergrad at brunel and i did an undergrad in psychology with professional development so that was a sandwich course uh, it was a thin sandwich, so I did two six-month research placements, um, and then I, I graduated uh, in 2010, and um, went on to well, I did some voluntary work, a lot of voluntary work, a lot, um, and um, went on to work as a research worker at King's. I was doing research into Alzheimer's disease, and then um, and then. Uh, yeah, really love that job. Really, really love that job. Stay there for a while. Then I changed to another job, uh, another research role. Really, really didn't like that job. Um, but and then went back to my original workplace, but as the manager. All the while, that sort of was over three years. All the while, I was applying for the clinical psychology training every year. Um, the first year, I got one interview. Terrible. Went terribly. I've got video on that on YouTube. It was terrible. Second year, didn't get any interviews. Um, which was also terrible, but not as dramatic as the first year. And then the third year, I got one interview at Surrey. And um, funnily enough, that was shortly after I went back to my old workplace. So I wasn't there for very long managing that team um, before I went off onto training. Um, ah, I forgot I did a master's in the middle as well, just because I didn't get on the first year. I was like, well, they're not going to let me on. Okay, well, I'm going to do a master's. Um, but it was really interesting as well. I did it in clinical neuroscience. It was really, really good. Really interesting. Um, so yeah, I got onto training and training is, is, it usually takes three years, but unfortunately it took me five. Um, but that's okay. I had a baby and stuff happens. And um, yeah, it took me five. And then I, I qualified in 2019. Um, and it's it's a hard old training. It's it's very competitive training to get onto, which is why I'm really passionate about 
making it accessible to um, underrepresented groups. It's a notoriously white middle class female profession and unfortunately it's just difficult for people from sort of underprivileged backgrounds to get into, you know, those sort of um, those experience, those experiences and those opportunities. So I'm just trying to bring that. I can see a question here. Do you have any recommend recommendations on what to look out for when looking for further study or clinical training? Um, in terms of so, OK, so when you're I guess you're all doing psychology undergrads. So, so and um, that needs to be um, accredited by the BPS. So once you've got that, you've got the basic academic criteria to get onto the training. If you want to do a master's, you can, but it's not required. Um, but just a note on that, actually, um, because of how competitive it is to give yourself the best chance, you, you kind of need a two one, a high two one or a first now. Um, if you don't, then it might work in your favour if you do a master's, um, if you've got like a two two or a low two one. Um, in terms of um, what courses to take, anything that's kind of clinic, anything that's clinically applied would be good. Um, there is a clinical psychology master's. Um, it's not necessary to study, as I say, but it might give you a bit of um, a, a way, a, a, an understanding of, of how the theories work. But really and truly, the main thing is to um, get experience, work experience, and to apply the theories in, in clinical practice as much as you can. Um, that might look like getting an assistant psychologist post. That's the kind of, I don't know, ideal route, but it's not the only route. Care assistant work is, is great. Um, uh, research work is also quite competitive, but it's really, really good.